Good morning. Christmas already? Wow. The year went by quickly, didn't it? Christmas is a special time of year, a time of joy and reflection, presents, programs like this one, singing of carols, goodwill toward men, and Christmas cards. Speaking of Christmas cards, did you get yours out on time? That list seems endless, doesn't it? Friends from long ago, friends from now, co-workers, acquaintances, father, mother, sister, brother, aunts, uncles, cousins, in-laws. And then there's the choice of cards. What kind of Christmas card do you choose? Are you cheap like me and buy the boxed cards at the end of the season to send out the following year? Or are you the careful, sentimental, thoughtful person who spends an hour looking for that special card to send to that special person or persons in your life? Have you ever thought about the variety of cards that are available? Cards that play music, cards that talk, cards that sing, photo cards, you know the ones, the cute updated pictures of your kids for everyone to ooh and all over, and then display on their fridge until the following year when you send another updated photo card. Funny, isn't it? How the kids get older every year, but <laughs> we never do. What about the wording of the card? Here's a common one. Season's greetings. The connotation is generic, non-offensive. It could be appropriate for anyone, close friend or someone you hardly know or someone you know well but <laughs> would rather not. Someone you care about or don't. Often it'll have a picture of snow and sleighs, presents, or the big man in the red suit. <laughs> nah, it doesn't really convey the true meaning of Christmas, does it? How about this one? It shows a sweet family gathered around the Christmas tree, a nostalgic scene of peace and serenity. You know the kind. It says in big scrolling letters on the front, from our house to yours. Robert, you put that down. Let's see what's in it. Oh, you have to wait just like everyone else. Now, I've got to find my Christmas card list. It's here somewhere. You haven't sent out the Christmas cards yet? Oh, no, I still have to get a whole other box of cards. Listen, I'm just glad I have the letter written that we send out with the Christmas cards. Well, last year you didn't get them out until March, so... No, dear, that was the year before last. Last year, I got it out in April. <laughs> oh, I'm out of wrapping paper. I've got to have more wrapping paper. I'll get some wrapping paper after I come home from the gift exchange at work. You have a gift exchange at work? You did not tell me that. You forgot it. Let's see. Now, how could that have happened? Because yesterday I cooked cookies... I wrapped presents. I still have to go get those little green bean crunchy things that go on the casserole that you like so much, Robert. I haven't even done that yet. And the house is filthy, and I have to clean it for Grandma and Grandpa. Well, do we have a gift exchange around the house I can use? Hmm, let's see. As a matter of fact, we do. How about the tie I gave you last year, dear? I don't think you've ever worn it. Very funny. Mm -hmm. I'm just being practical. Mom, i got a gift exchange, too. You do not have a gift exchange. Oh, I'll never get all of this done. I will never get all of this. Oh, no, and now it's time for choir rehearsal. We have got to get to church. Okay, you two get in the car, and I'll go get the coats. Wait, before everyone rushes off, what's going on here? Who are you? I'm the narrator. The what? I was just telling these people here what a beautiful picture of peace and tranquility your card is. It looks to be deceiving. Apparently. Oh, you should have been here yesterday. I made four kinds of cookies. Wrapping paper was everywhere. Friend, friend, who are all those people and why are they out there? This is a Christmas program, Christmas cards and carols. Well, if I'd known people were gonna be here today, I would have cleaned yesterday. Relax, dear. It's no different if you were in a store. 
Grandma and Grandpa, are you in there? It's Robert. Robert, shh, shh. Sit down and behave. People are watching. I should think a Christmas card would be used to having people look at it. Look at all those people in there. Oh, I'd rather not. This is a bit overwhelming. Sorry about that. But I think by the time we finish tonight, you'll understand why they're all here. Are you trying to tell us something? Actually, I am. It seems that with all the busyness of the Christmas season, you've forgotten the true meaning of this blessed time of the year. We've gotten off track, haven't we? I'm afraid so. Tell you what, I know you have lots to do, but if you don't mind, I'd like you to take a look at the other Christmas cards I was about to show all these folks. Will the choir queen mind if we miss choir rehearsal? No, no, she won't. I'm assuming your family owns a Bible. Yes, yes we do. Would you mind getting it? Robert, will you get me the Bible, please? Now, if everyone will sit down, if you don't mind an outsider's point of view, it seems to me you've been making preparations for everything except... Except what? what? Except your hearts. God's ways continually exceed our claims to comprehend them. Please turn to Luke 2 and read verses 1 through 7. Sure. <clears throat> oh, did you mean out loud? But yes, please, so everyone can hear. 
I'm just thinking about all those people out there. I'm, a, I'm not much of a public speaker. It's also important for you to be a witness for Christ. You're right. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn born son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. He's a miracle, Joseph. Every baby's a miracle. But this child is like unlike any other miracle. Jesus. The angel told me that you should call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. His name must be Jesus. Yes, sure. The Lord is salvation. Jesus it is. <laughs> people are gonna have a hard time believing that the son of a poor carpenter is isn't his son but the son of God to think he would leave his throne above all the splendors of heaven worship of angels to stoop so low as this even being born in a lowly stable rather than a palace every Jewish girl has dreamed of being worthy to be the mother of the Messiah yet I feel so unworthy I'm nothing special. I'm only human. I need my child to be my savior as much as anyone needs him to be their salvation from their sin. Yet, God chose me. I've often wondered over the past nine months why. I am truly blessed among women. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in the God of my salvation for such a gift as this. Perhaps it's because you realize your unworthiness that you have found such favor with God. God cannot have sent his child to someone who is proud of heart. To think that I am part of the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. It's, it's almost too much for the human mind to grasp. One day, every knee will bow to this child, for he shall be great. He shall be called Son of the Highest and Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. What sweeter music can we bring? What sweeter music can we bring? What sweeter music? What sweeter music than a carol for to sing? Awake and 
Jesus for the very first time. I know. Hey, we're looking into the face of God come in the flesh. We truly have lost the focus, our focus of the true meaning mm -hmm. of Christmas. Mm -hmm. There's more. Please continue reading in Luke 2, verses 8 through 13. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over the flock, by night, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Amen. 
of last night were a dream. If they were, we all had the same dream. To think that the angels spoke to us of the Messiah's birth. Did you ever see such glorious light that surrounded the host of angels? I have never, ever seen the sunshine as bright as that light. Then to see the baby, I didn't want to leave. Oh, but wasn't it a joy going through the streets of Bethlehem? Afterwards, knocking on doors and proclaiming his birth to everyone? I'm not sure everyone appreciated us waking him up in the middle of the night. Oh, but they all seemed amazed at what we told them. Do you think they really believed it was true? Some probably did. Most probably didn't. Maybe it's a sign of what's to come. What do you mean? Well, some will believe he is the Messiah, but most probably will not. I wonder why God announced his coming to us, simple shepherds. Well, the scriptures are full of references to sheep and shepherds. King David said, the Lord is like a shepherd to those who belong to God. Isaiah says that we have all gone astray like sheep. We all know how difficult they can be. They certainly have a mind of their own. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're all sheep in need of a shepherd. That's for sure. Now, the angels called the child the Savior. Perhaps the most important reference to sheep in the Holy Book is what Prophet Isaiah told us about the coming of the Savior, that he would be brought as a lamb to the slaughter. This Jesus, he must be the sacrificial lamb of which Isaiah spoke. Do you mean to tell me that this precious baby will one day face the sufferings described by Isaiah? Yes. Maybe God had a greater purpose than just announcing the birth of his son by sending a host of angels to us. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. The Lord had to announce his gracious gift to shepherds, those who spend their lives watching over the sheep some of which will become temple sacrifices. God had a divine purpose in choosing shepherds to introduce to all mankind that little lamb is the perfect and pure sacrificial lamb of God who will one day take away the sins of the world. Behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John the Baptist says that. Yes, he did. I never thought Easter would be part of Christmas. Well, Christ's birth and death go hand in hand. His purpose in the coming to earth was to die. Your family has come a long way already in gaining the right perspective on this season. There's just one more card I'd like you to take a look at. Please turn to Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the west, from the east, came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will separate my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. 
After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frank and scents and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. not what Herod led us to expect. This is a very poor family. I hope my gift of gold will allow them to meet some special need they may have. Perhaps they will use it to finance a trip away from here. There must be some reason 
why the angel told us not to return to Herod. Yeah, Herod the Great's not known for his compassion. It's rumored he had his own wife killed and two of his sons. He's an ambitious man. It's not out of character for him to want to dispose of someone who would threaten his throne. Mm -hmm. I hope my gift of myrrh is not used too soon. I would not wish the death of this child. And to think we came so close to leading Herod to this child. Herod will no doubt be very angry that we have not returned to him. Yes, but God protected us and God will protect this child. For despite all his wealth and power, even Herod cannot dethrone deity. Your gift of frankincense was very fitting. Thank you. It's a reflection of the worship of my heart. The worship of our heart is the most treasured gift of all. A gift this child, this king of kings, deserves. Amen. We're back where we started, aren't we? It all comes back to the heart. Love is the gift of Christmas to us all. I was hoping you'd see that. I was hoping everyone would see that. 